guys, uh, welcome to my workshop on how to make beeswax. So to give you guys a little intro of what we're going to be doing today, um, I would like you guys to know what they are. So basically beeswax, uh, they look and they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. So this is just one of them. And we have a different color. Of course, you can customize them as what you want when you pick the cloth. So let's get started. I guess for starters, what they are, they're basically reusable um, alternatives to plastic wrap. We know that plastic can be such detrimental to our environment and this is a way to actually combat that. So basically, won't need these anymore and we won't need plastic wraps anymore either, which is nice. Another thing is, or something that we usually get asked is what are they used for well they do have a lot of uses and let me show you guys for what so if you guys ever see these in your fridge which most of us do uh, we know that we don't always use all of our fruit and vegetables so a nice thing about them is we can actually cut it like this and let's say we ate the other half and the other half we did not. What we can do is let's wrap it and put it away. Another thing we usually get asked is what are they made of? Well, it's 100% cotton, cotton cloth. It is made out of resin and beeswax and lastly jojoba oil. Um, each one has their own properties. The jojoba oil is for the pliability and the softness. Um, the tacky and stickiness that holds it together is the resin. And the beeswax has antibacterial properties to them. So our fruit and our vegetables usually stay good for longer. Um, they're also good for cheeses uh, and for sandwiches. So that's really nice. So I have another demo here. And in this one, you'll see that it is actually longer and it actually has my cilantro in it. So you can do a lot of things with them, um, use them as you please, and we will get started with the ingredients. All right guys, so basically, I'm gonna go over some of the materials and ingredients that you guys will need. So for starters, of course, we need a beeswax. Um, and the only reason why I really like this is because you won't need a braider. It will just be in pebble form, um, which will be really easy for you to melt, either using the iron or on the stove top. So that's really nice and that's why I really like it. Highly recommend. Uh, we need resin, of course. This is what makes it really pliable, um, I mean, really sticky. We want that stickiness so everything can come close together. That's what that looks like. Personally, after a while, your resin uh, will actually be powder form, which is amazing. We want that because, of course, we want it to be really easy for it to mix together with all the other ingredients. And jojoba oil which again it just makes it really soft and this oil could be used for everything at home you can use it for lotion uh, you can use it in your hair so um, even if you get the big bottle don't worry um you will go through it i'm actually almost done with mine and then these are the ingredients you will need half a cup of beeswax you will need about i believe one tablespoon of the um, resin and about three tablespoons of the jojoba. You will need measuring cups. You will need um, just a little one just for like the little ingredients but half for the beeswax and the tablespoon for the jojoba and for the resin. You will need a um, like a little brush. I got this from Home Depot. I think I sold this for my parents. So wherever you can find one laying around, dollar store works too. We need the scissors for cutting of the cloth. Um, this is just from any Joann's store, which is pretty universal. Um, 
I will have to add that you will have to wash these. Why do you have to wash them? Just because when we start adding the ingredients to them, you won't be able to wash them. So we wanna make sure that they are clean. And then an iron. Now, if you're gonna be using the stove and the, the pot for your stove top method, um, you will need like a two burner style. So technically what that is, it's just a pot and a pan or two pots and a container on the top so you can actually put the ingredients on there, okay? And if you don't wanna do that, um, you are more than welcome to do the second method, which is basically just using an iron, which will cover both. You'll need something to actually um, work with the iron. So if anything spills over, you don't have to worry that you mess up your table. And lastly, we will need parchment paper. Of course, this is uh, compostable, so you know the environment. And I will be reusing the one that I've always used. So you guys will grab your cloth, and again, you can find this from any local store. Um, so you guys pick, you can also tie-dye that tie these. Just make sure that they are 100% cotton. Um, it just seeps water with the ingredients, and so I will show you guys how I like to cut mine. If you wanna get technical, you can use a ruler. I really, it doesn't matter. Um, so I like to cut off any access that I just don't want. So I will start off cutting that off. I would like to mention to you guys that uh, you will see this fringe and you don't really have to worry about it coming undone um, when we add the basically the mixture just because um it'll be soaked it will just be soaked with the mixture that it'll kind of stick together but if it is something that you kind of want to get rid of uh there are scissors called pinking shears um that could take care of that and it'll last you a really long time another good thing about this is that uh beeswax wraps are compostable so after six to twelve months so half a year to a year, uh, you can either revive them or you can compost them. And if you live in the Kalamazoo area, the Office for Sustainability does composting, um, which you can just bring it to the office or to the Gibbs house. So those are your options for that. It's really nice. And here they are. This is just the sizes that I personally want. Um, again, you can cut just cut this off but it doesn't really bother me and none doesn't have to be perfect but you can grab a ruler if you would like and then cut them to your size um, I just know that I have little plates at home and for basically my fruit and vegetables but depending on what you want to use it for is what you would want the size to be so that's pretty ideal for some of my containers um, that won't be a worry and here's another one it's a pretty good size for either so that works all right guys so we will start off with showing you guys our first method personally I I would experiment with both. I've tried both. Um, no method is better than the other. This one is just has a little bit more steps, but basically you start off with the first pan. You have boiling water and you add either another pan to the top to add a, to have a double boiler. Um, this is where you would add all of your ingredients. So as so and as so. Um, that is one way. Another way is to grab a basically a mixing pot like this. Again, you will have the boiling water and you will set this on top. And again, I like this better just because it is for the purpose of mixing. And I can always just clean this out easier than my pan personally. So that is a method. 
And then once that starts boiling, we want all of your ingredients to basically mix together cohesively. So what we want to do is we want to add them all in here. And want to spray it all. Technically, we need one tablespoon. We need three tablespoons of resin and we need half a cup of the beeswax. And then we wait for a boil and then once that's all mixed, I will be back with you guys. Just a quick note, be advised that if you are using a induction burner, it might take you five minutes to heat up the mixture very well. So I would always be around. Um, also be advised that if you are using a stove top at home, um, that one might take 15 minutes. So time yourself accordingly. Um, I would not leave it unattended for the simple reason that it splatters. Um, the wax and the resin, you might hear popping. Um, that is normal. So here I have my liquid. The nice thing about the stove top is that it actually mixes it very well. You don't have to worry about uh, you getting little areas of just beeswax or anything like that. Um, everything is cohesively mixed. You do want to work fast because it will dry up. Um, so here, I have my little cloth that I cut off and this will be my workstation again. Use the pan just for um, precaution reasons because it, the material will spill over. So grab your parchment paper, layer your cloth. Basically you want to work really fast. You can spread this as you would like from the inside out and work your way out. Once it touches the cloth, be advised that it will soak through. And basically, it will get hard, because again, it's beeswax. Um, be advised that if you don't spread it really fast, that's okay. Um, just get more of your mixture and spread it evenly. But this is why we wanna use an iron afterwards so we can get that good soak on both sides and we don't waste the material. And also another reason why I say work from the middle and work out is because when we pass the iron over, everything will melt again and the material will be, will be spread outward. So you don't have to worry. And this is why you see this all on the outsides because it will happen. So be advised. You want to then cover it up. Have your iron set on cotton. And you wanna make sure that you iron it again. What you will see is that you will see some seeping and it'll look like it's wet. Uh, the objective is to actually make it look like it's wet because you know that everything is being seeped through. Um, so you just wanna work at it and make sure that everything is covered. And once everything looks like this, like it's wet, um, you're basically done. Set that to the side. Be cautious, it is gonna be hot. So here we have the finished product. It should look wet. Um, 
on both sides when you peel it and this is why we use an iron just because it makes sure that the mixture seeps through on both sides so you don't have to worry about getting patchy um, areas everything will be covered and I like to just make it work a little faster so we want to air it out um, you can hang these up to dry and they'll be ready within about five minutes but this is it it's actually done and it's ready to be used all right guys so this will be uh, one of the other methods that we have to making these if you don't want to use the stove top that's understandable that is okay play around with both is what i would advise can't go wrong with either uh, but basically we will start off with the pan on the bottom just so if anything spills over you are covered um, you also just want to whatever table you're working on you want to be cautious with that as well we want to use your first sheet of parchment make sure it's bigger then the piece that you will be um, ironing just if you have spillage over as you see uh, you'll be okay so we want to use our cloth that we previously cut we want to make sure it's within our pan and then we will start adding the ingredients so with this one you don't you don't want to go overboard with any of the material but you do want to make sure that everything is even so you want to make sure that you layer it with the jojoba and this is actually basically half of a tablespoon i didn't use much just because our piece is very small um with the resin i would use probably a teaspoon you want to make sure that when you're sprinkling over it's pretty sparse and that you can cover it very well but the iron will actually take care of your mixture and beeswax make sure that again it is spread evenly why do we want to spread it evenly just because we don't want anything to be patchy uh, we don't want an area to be too tacky and then an area that is not. Um, that's also a concern when we don't actually use the stove top. Um, this looks pretty good. There's not actually like a set measurement for this. Just make sure that everything is layered evenly. And the iron will actually take care of the spreading of everything together because of the heat. So once that looks good, I will actually add the second parchment paper again bigger than the actual cloth just in case it spills over you are covered and you want to set your iron to cotton just because that's what the cloth is and we just want to make sure that the beeswax melts. what you'll notice is that some areas might take you longer like the sides um, i will also be cautious and get a bigger pan to work with um, you want to make sure that everything is evenly distributed as of right now you know that it is not just because there's some patches that are actually more soaked and then there are these patches that actually don't have anything and that's how you can kind of tell like hey am i doing it right am i not doing it right so i will keep working until everything is soaked through so as you can see um there are some areas that might need more so like this little area so what you can always do is grab some of your resin and this is, has some of my jojoba oil and my resin mixed in from grabbing the materials. And then you can grab that. This actually is actually probably needs one as well. Like that. Like that. 
we will cover it again and then screw the iron again. Welcome back and I hope you had as much fun uh, doing my beeswax with me as much as I did. Uh, I learned this a few years ago but just to recap on a little things, uh, some last closing remarks would be um, got, kind of going over both methods. So the first method that we saw was using the soap tap, which I personally will say that I prefer for one to two reasons basically. So you'll see that everything gets coated evenly. Um, that's important just because you get the tackiness everywhere, you get the beeswax properties everywhere, and you don't get little blotches of beeswax, basically. Um, it goes on your preferred fruit and vegetables and cups very well. Um, you don't have to worry, like I said, about the blotchiness. Um, with the second method, of just using the iron you will notice there's little areas of either resin or beeswax now that's not to say that one method is better than the other um, it's basically an experiment I have been doing these for a while but I still haven't 100% mastered it just because you will see the little areas of um, beeswax now it's fixable you can pass the iron over it and just blot it with paper towel and they'll take care of that. Now it has the same properties so you don't have to worry. So you just cover it and you warm it up with your hands to activate it. See? So it'll still work but that's just some things to watch out for if you feel like um, there's little imperfections. Nah, you don't have to worry. You can just go over it with the iron and blot it with a little paper towel um, and it should be fine. Just air to dry. To clean them, uh, you want to make sure that you do not use meat for this reason. Why? Because we can't wash them. Now that they've been processed um, with the mixture, you can't throw it in the dishwasher. Uh, you can't throw it in your washer um, you can simply rinse it under lukewarm water for however long you would like uh, nothing scorching hot just because the mixture is activated by heat uh, and then just rinse it I would do so after every uh, use so after I put a sandwich on there or cheese is fine but no meats for that same reason you just can't wash them like I stated before they are actually good for six to 12 months. Now, if you use it every day, it might actually uh, need some reviving sooner. And what I mean by that is you'll just have to do the same mixture and run it over the material again and it should be fine. If you do not want to do that, you can compost them. Like I stated before, the Office for Sustainability does composting or take it to any other <laughs> composting position that you would like. I personally love the office, so I would advise any student to do that as well. So the induction burner, if this is what you're going to be using or your stove top at home, be advised of the splatter. This is beeswax with resin. Why is it resin? Just because of the tackiness and the beeswax is just like any other wax. It's going to be really hard for you to nail it off. I wouldn't advise that I would use vinegar. So please be advised that you might have to do some cleaning of the stovetop surrounding areas. With the iron, um, you will also see this on it. This is again, beeswax and resin. Again, just go over it with vinegar and that should take care of that as well. And if you guys have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. So thank you.